Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Record from Avon High School and we're going to take a look at our last example in our group of problems that deal with the quotient rule. And we're going to tie in a little multiple, multiple representation work here by focusing on a table and extracting values from the table after we use the quotient rule. So let's take a look at this problem. In our example four, it says that we have a, uh, some values of two different differentiable functions, f of x and g of x that are uh, placed in this table along with their derivatives. And so you can see from the table lots of numbers, lots of information. Obviously we're not going to use all of these numbers, but we're probably going to use a few of them. And our function k of x down below is defined to be f of x over g of x. Our directions are to find k prime of 2. So the very first thing that we are going to set out to do is to take the derivative of this k of x. I'm going to do my work over here off to the side. And so to find k prime of x, given that k of x is f of x over g of x, well, that is our quotient rule. In fact, in most textbooks, that's like the presentation of the rational function before you use the quotient rule. They have an f on top and a g on bottom. So you could just blindly copy down those terms term by term, or you could think about what the quotient rule is really saying, and that is simply to take the derivative of the numerator, f prime in this case, multiply that by the denominator, g of x, subtract the numerator, f of x, and multiply by the derivative of the denominator, in this case that's g prime of x. And all of that would be placed on top of the denominator, which in this case would be g of x and then squared. And so there's your product, or I'm sorry, there is your quotient rule. Now we just have to find a very specific value for this derivative. And it says that that value is 2. So we replace the x with 2 everywhere where we see an x. So notice all of these x's going bye-bye, disappearing, and leaving us with this particular statement. Now, a lot of students ask, do we have to show that step? And the answer is really no. If you wanted to go ahead and start extracting values from the table, you could do that. But I also, I also believe that students are, are going to be less likely to make a mistake if they have this step down on paper and they can refer to these functions a little bit easier. For instance, f prime of 2. That means we're going to look into the f prime column when the x is 2 and we cross-reference those columns and row values and we get negative 1 right there. g of 2 is going to be in the g column, of course, at the value of 3. Minus our f of 2 is going to be a 4. And our g prime of 2 is going to be a 3 halves. And then the g of 2, again, we've already seen that before, 3. We're going to square that, and that's going to be our denominator. Now, you might look at this and say, well, wait a minute. We didn't need all these numbers. We only needed that row where x was 2. Well, you're going to find that this table is going to make a lot of appearances in a lot of my future problems that I have in my notes, my curriculum that I've written, and, of course, a lot of the videos that we send your way. So let's go ahead and simplify this to make it look all pretty in the event that this was a multiple choice problem. We would go ahead and multiply negative one and three. We would multiply four and three halves, which I believe that's gonna be a six, right? 12 over two. And then of course the denominator, three squared is nine. And before long, you're gonna find that this just turns into negative one. And that's what your nice little quotient rule problem with a table intervention is typically gonna look like throughout the curriculum. Anyway, I hope this example helps you out, and we'll see you next time.